Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you and with thy spirit let us pray almighty god who through thine only begotten son jesus christ hast overcome death and opened unto us the gate of everlasting life grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the lord's resurrection may be raised from death from the death of sin by thy life-giving spirit the same jesus christ our lord who liveth and reigneth with thee in the same spirit ever one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord from whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2 and 14 through 24 on page 760 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read it together. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. 
The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks. I would remind you brothers, this is the second reading. That's from 1 Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried and he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and then appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though, no, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. 
The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, followed him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Well, first off, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Lord. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You know what? Let's say that one more time because it's been so long since we could. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There we go. When I preached on Palm Sunday, I began with uh, sharing some advice to a new priest. That advice was, when having to preach on Palm Sunday, don't. For Easter Sunday, the advice is, here's the sermon. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The end. Why such advice? Well, because everyone has heard and everyone knows the Easter story. We already know the ending. Surprise, Jesus rose from the dead. What more could you possibly add? So let the people get back to their chocolate Easter bunnies and their Easter Sunday dinners. It's a little bit hard to argue that people haven't already heard the Easter story. For example, the story in today's gospel lesson from John is one that appears in pretty much the same form in all of the gospels. The women, or woman in John's case, show up. There's an empty tomb. There are one or two young men slash angels dressed in white. Off the women, or woman, go running to the apostles. The men don't believe them because, well, they're men. They have to go see it for themselves. Surprise, the women, or woman, were telling the truth, and everybody runs back home. For us as readers of the gospel, there really is no surprise ending. For us as believers, yes, there is a gr the great mystery of Jesus' resurrection. But we knew it was coming all along. We've known it since Christmas. We've known it since Advent. Heck, we've known it since we were children. 
Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. The end. See y'all next Sunday. Oh, wait. I don't get paid for three sentence sermons. So don't go diving into your mimosas or your Bloody Marys just yet. We've actually got some work to do here this morning. Later this morning, Ken and Linda is going to read the prayer for our transition. A prayer which incidentally was written by Deacon Greg. I'm not sure that we've ever actually told you that. That prayer, as you have heard over these many weeks, asks that we, the people of St. Gabriel, incline our hearts to discern God's still small voice and that we be guided to pray our new rector into God's light. That prayer draws some of its inspiration from the idea of praying our new rector in, an idea which is based in part on a story Mother Luann told us before she retired. The idea of praying our new rector in is an expression of the belief that the Holy Spirit is already whispering in the ear of our new rector that St. Gabriel's is waiting for them. For weeks after hearing that story, this hand gesture became something that I found myself doing repeatedly. Well, during Lent, our profile committee have been those hands praying our new rector in. They've been the hands of the Holy Spirit, working hard to put together the materials which are going to help our new rector find us. As we've all been preparing for Easter, they have also been preparing St. Gabriel's to take the next step on our journey, getting us ready for the next part of our Easter story. In the Easter story in John's Gospel this morning, there is little doubt that Mary Magdalene stars alongside Jesus. Yes, it is a story about resurrection, but it's also a story about recognition. Mary is grief-stricken because she believes that Jesus' body has been taken from the tomb. In fact, she says, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him three times. She says it to the apostles. She says it to the angels in the tomb. And she says it to Jesus, who she does not recognize. Even when he speaks to her, she doesn't recognize him. She can't see beyond her grief and feelings of horror that Jesus' body has been taken away. She doesn't recognize him until he speaks her name, Mary. And only then does she turn and see him for who he is. Jesus calls to her and she recognizes him. It is this calling and subsequent recognition. It is in that that I find our story as the people of St. Gabriel's intersecting with this morning's gospel, the call and the recognition. As Christians, we know that our story as disciples of Jesus is an Easter story. Christ died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. But this morning's story about Mary Magdalene and Jesus, about call and recognition, offers us a chance to understand our story, our story as the people in the community of St. Gabriel's in this period of transition, to recognize that as an Easter story, a story of call and of recognition. As I mentioned earlier, we have been and we will continue to pray our new rector in. We have faith that there is out there a person who God is calling to lead us. We have faith that God is calling out to this person, and we have faith that they will hear that call, and that they will turn towards us, and that they will recognize that they have been called by God to come and lead us. This is our Easter story. Some might ask, what will we be like when this story is finished? Will we be like what we were? Well, probably not. 
nor should we. Will we be able to recognize ourselves? Undoubtedly, because we are participating in our own transformation. The advice that an Easter Sunday sermon need only be three sentences long is bad advice, because the surprise ending of the Easter story is the still unfolding story of the already but not yet coming of the kingdom of God. The arrival of our new rector won't be the surprise ending of our Easter story. It will be the beginning of the next chapter of our story. Because our story is an Easter story. And so it also doesn't end until we see Christ come again in all of his glory and we join with him at the heavenly banquet table. So this morning, let the Easter story help remind us that we are engaged in the work of the Holy Spirit. As our profile reaches completion and we begin to search for the person who is searching for us, let us remember that we, as the people of St. Gabriel's, are all participating in a ministry of call and recognition. We are all participating in a ministry that lives at the very center of our faith as Easter people. Amen. Continuing on page seven of your booklet with the renewal of our baptismal vows. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by work and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbors as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word 
and live in unity and godly love. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray today for the peace of Jerusalem. And in our own diocese, we pray for St. James Coquille, Church of the Good Samaritan, Samaritan Village, OSU Campus Ministry, and Good Samaritan Regional Medical Center, Corvallis. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially for our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, our bishop, Diana Akiyama. We pray for our clergy, Canon Linda, Father Everett, Deacon Tom, Deacon Roger, and Deacon Greg, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in any trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Please join me in praying aloud for those in immediate need of healing prayer. The Graham, Stu, and Utter families, David, Ron, and Jeannie, Tom, Randy, Sarah, John and Kay, Carl and Fran, Holly, Gail, Susie and Ted, Matthew, Lyle, Sherry and Lila May, John and the Pollard family, Kathy and Joe, and Ellen. Are there others? GE and David. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially for Robert Bernhard, Mary Gregg, Irva Graham, Rachel Wheeler, Walt Weber, and Bobby Battles, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of St. Gabriel and all the saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Are there others? Loving God, our sure foundation, you call us to ministry as the people of St. Gabriel. Incline our hearts to discern your still small voice. Guide us to pray our new rector into your light. Amen. Amen. Those things, good Lord, that our servants have prayed for, give us grace to work for, and in the purpose of your love, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. And for our birthdays today, we have Allison and Nancy and Roger and Sandra and Chad and Kathy. Are any of those folks here today? If they are, I, I don't see the whole screen, so. And if anyone else has a birthday, let me know. Let us pray together. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. And for anniversaries, we have Gary and Echo, Echo, and Angie and Matt. Are they on the, no? Okay, let us pray. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon those, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I say to you all, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And not thy spirit. To you, Lord, belongs the greatness, the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. All that is in heaven and in earth is yours and of your own we give to you.
Unmute, please. Unmute. Yeah. Unmuted. We sing because we're happy, folks. Did you notice the dancing that's going on up here? This is Easter. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Continuing on page 333 of the prayer book or on page 10 of your service leaflet. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death and by his rising to life again hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father. For that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and his precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of all of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here, here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, 
ourselves, our souls, our bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet be, we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, power and the glory of every day. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. You are invited now into a special time of communion as we open our hearts to the abundant grace of Jesus Christ. In these times when we cannot be physically present to one another, we remember that Christ is always present to us, connecting us one to another in the mystical body of Christ, which knows no bounds of space or time.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us God's children through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of God's blessing, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Won. He 
is alive. Go tell it. Jesus lives forevermore. He's alive. Great morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Yes, Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's alive. What a great, great day. What a great, great day. Jesus is alive. What a great, great day. Jesus is alive. Yes, my Jesus is alive. Hallelujah, he's alive. What a great, great day. What a great, great day. He is alive. Yes, he is alive. On that great morning, on that great morning, on that great, great morning, hallelujah, hallelujah, on that great, on that great morning. Oh, you can stop the recording if you're... Yes, you can stop the yes. recording. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> okay.